How is everyone today? Hopefully you've got a great day going. Oh, somebody from Texas, welcome. I have family in Texas. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get started this afternoon. Thank you for joining the Nevada Department of Wildlife for a conservation education program. This is a family program and it is rated PG. Profanity and inappropriate behavior will not be tolerated in the chat or Q&A. Uh, please keep all of your chat and questions on topic to what we're covering and failure to do so could potentially lead to you being muted and even removed from the live program. So let's just keep it fun and family friendly in all of this. Also at the very end, we will have a survey and I really hope that you guys all stick around to fill that out for us or complete it by email later on. Appreciate that. So just a couple of housekeeping things for running your Zoom, if you're not familiar with it. We will bounce back and forth between chat and Zoom and um, question and answer. The Q&A box down at the bottom. You can answer or ask some of your questions on that. You can also answer some of the ones that I'm gonna ask you through the chat. This is going to get gooey and be a little bit gross for some of you. So just keep the, the comments to a minimum. I understand some of it's kind of gross, but it is part of the biology of the fish. And we're gonna explore that today. So today we are going to explore a rainbow trout. I'm gonna have um, Nicole, who is on the other side, she'll be moderating this and helping out with some of the questions and some of the chat box, as well as launching some polls for you. My name is Julie Gabrielson, and I'm an education coordinator for the ELCO office for the Nevada Department of Wildlife in our eastern region. Nicole, who I just mentioned on the other side, she's an AmeriCorps member, and she works directly with myself. All right, Nicole, shall we pop up our first poll question? All right, how many of you have ever caught and or cleaned a fish? Lots of times, a time or two, or no way? We'll give it a few minutes or a few seconds for everybody to answer. All right, now we've got a pretty good mix, that's great. All right, so it looks like the bulk of you have never done this before and probably have never had any desire to, or you've only done it once or twice. So part of this you could even is look at as being a tutorial on how to clean a fish when you're out um, enjoying the, the waters and taking your stuff home for you. So Nicole, you're welcome to share the results as well as take the poll down. And we're gonna go ahead and move on. Nicole will also be switching between the PowerPoint screen and um, myself. So the way that you can, can move back and forth between a bigger picture of me and a bigger picture of the PowerPoint is right next to my video of my, where I'm at, there's a little gray bar and that bar moves back and forth and allows you to adjust the screen. So for the most part, you're gonna have control over that. There will be times that Nicole will have it solely on myself without the split screen. So for now, we're gonna take down the poll. Actually, I think it's already down. And we're gonna go ahead and get started with our rainbow trout. This trout was brought to me for this from the, uh, the Gallagher Fish Hatchery in Ruby Valley, which is in Northeastern Nevada. There are several things that the, you would normally see on, on fish that you catch out in the, in the waters that you're not seeing on this. And that would primarily be the fins. A lot of these fins are run down because this was one of the breeder fish. And as a breeder fish, they're in concrete runners. And so all of their fins get worn down. This particular fin would have been the dorsal fin. This is the caudal fin. We've got the pelvic fin, sorry, the anal fin. The pelvic fin is right here. And then you've also got an adipose fin, sorry, back here where you can, there it is, having a hard time finding it on my camera. This is the adipose pin, fin. Now on the, on the exterior of your trout, you're also gonna see a hole at the bottom of its belly, right down there by the anal fin. Can anybody guess what that might be? 
Go ahead and, and sound off in your chat. Let's see what you have to say in the chat. Hello to California as well. What do you think that hole at the bottom of their belly might be called? Also make sure in your chat down at the very bottom, you'll see a two with a drop down box. Make sure that says all panelists and attendees. So that hole is called a vent and that is used for several different things. They use it for extraction for, for bodily waste, but they also use it for laying their eggs or laying their milk, which is their, um, their sperm that fertilizes the eggs after the female lays them. So another thing that is really cool about these guys is the lateral line. I don't know how well you can see it with this, but right down the edge of their body, right down the side is a line. Now, if you're holding a fish, you can actually feel that line a little bit, but that lateral line, it's like a sonar for them. They can feel things moving and coming in the water and that allows them to, to it's a defense mechanism and helps them know a little bit earlier what's coming on to include lures and flies and stuff like that that we might be trying to get them with. So with this, we're gonna go into why is a fish slimy? Does anybody know why they're slimy? Go ahead and use your chat and let me know why you think they might be slimy. Protective covering. So a big part of their slime is that it's protective. It helps them to escape predators. It helps them as lubrication going through water and over rocks and through bushes and anything like that underwater. But it also helps to protect them from bacteria that might cause problems for them underwater as well. Um, and that, that's a big part of what slimy is for. If you've ever noticed, when we try to grab them, they slide right out of our hands without any problem. And that is their defense mechanism. What are fins for? We have a poll that we've got coming up. If Nicole would, would go ahead and launch the second poll, what are fins for? Are they for swimming speed, steering and balance, or attacking maybe the opposite gender? All right, so correct. For the most part, all of you got the correct answer was steering and balance. The swimming is not a big part of what the fins are for. The tail is what gives them the, the locomotion through the water. All right, thank you, Nicole. If we can go ahead and take down that, that pole. All right, what about the scales? Who thinks they know what the scales are for? Anybody know what the, the scales are for? Again, you can answer that through the chat. Scales are for protecting. Yep, they protect the soft body tissues that are underneath. Yep, so you got the slime and then the scales, and then we go on to the other stuff. Now, what do you think the function of the mouth is? Anybody have an idea of what the function of the mouth might be? Any guesses? Again, you can do that through the chat. To eat, yep. Oh, very good. I see food and allowing oxygenated water in, eating and breathing. Exactly. Their mouth is, is dual purpose. It's for eating and breathing, just like ours. It's what happens inside there that's a little bit different than ours. We're going to pop up another poll question, question number three. So if Nicole, you want to go ahead and pop that one up. How do the gills help the fish? Do they filter oxygen from the water for breathing? Do they filter waste from the water? Or maybe they hold food in the mouth before swallowing. Does anybody know? Great job, you guys. We'll let a couple more come in. But yes, they are intended, um, the, the, the gills filter the oxygen for the breathing. They, they bring the, the water into their mouth and they filter it through. So we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna get into the gills. I'm gonna tilt my camera down so from here on out, you're gonna be looking at the fish down on the table. 
All right, so I'm gonna take the trout and I'm gonna start by cutting open the gill. Now the gill plate is what I'm holding on to right here. The gill plate or the gill cover, that helps to protect all the gills that are in there. We're gonna just cut that off so that you can see it better. Now, as I come in here, you can see all of these really red filaments, the branched filaments. Those are what's used to absorb the oxygen and to get rid of the carbon dioxide from the lungs. Now, I'm gonna cut these out and I'm gonna show you something really special about these. Using your chat box, I want you to tell me how you think the trout is able to move the food into his stomach instead of through the gills and out. Anybody have an idea? Go ahead and use your chat box for that. Any ideas on how they might use, might get that food filtered into their stomach instead of out their, their gills? All right, I'm gonna give you a real close up. If you see on the underside of those gills, there are those little teeth looking filaments. Those are called rakers. And those sit in between the opening to the mouth and the exit of the filaments of the, the gills. Those rakers help to filter the food down into the esophagus keeping it from going into the, the, the gills themselves and out, out the outside of the gills with the carbon dioxide. So those are rakers. All right, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna start moving into, oh, Nicole just put it up for a little bit better picture of the rakers. You can see how the the filament, which is the, the really dark red spot, those are towards the outside, the exterior of the, of the trout. The rakers are towards the front of the mouth and those are the parts that, that keep the food from going out instead of going down the, into the esophagus. So Nicole, if you'll go ahead and pull up the internal parts. She's gonna pull up a slide and we're gonna talk a little bit about what we're gonna cover with this. There we go. So we just took off the gill plate and we talked about the external parts, the lateral line, the different fins, the vent. So now if you look at the inside, we're actually gonna get into that and we're gonna open the, the, the trout up and investigate all of those individual parts. So we're gonna go in through Starting at the opening of the vent, I'm gonna take my scissors. Hopefully I grabbed the, the sharper ones first hand. And I'm gonna carefully cut all the way up trying, making sure I get through all of the meat in there, all the way up to be right underneath the gills at the back of the mouth. So here I've cut open the entire belly. And again, this is, this is essentially a tutorial for cleaning a fish that you're gonna take home and um, cook as a whole fish instead of filleting it out. So the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a cut carefully because there's all kinds of parts in there. I'm gonna take a cut from the vent again and go up towards the backbone, the spine. to open that up even more. I'm gonna do the same cut right at the front behind the gills. And to make this even easier for all of us, I'm gonna cut this whole flap off. 
This is not part of cleaning a fish, getting it ready for food preparation. All right, so now that we're, we've, we've opened up the side, we're essentially looking at what you saw in that picture. And the first thing we're gonna pull out is this, this big red spot right here. Can anybody tell me what they might think that is? What's this big red spot? Go ahead and use your chat and tell me what you think that big red spot might be. Heart, lung, liver, heart, heart. Oh, we got a couple with the right answer in there. Liver is the correct answer. We are pulling out the liver. Anybody tell me by using chat what the liver does? It helps with digestion and it stores nutrients. So now this one, we might not have been able to save it. So we might have to skip our next poll question, but normally you can kind of see it on here, but this one, this one's probably gotten deteriorated because of the freezing process to get these, uh, the, fish, the trout ready for the dissection. So normally right about here, there's a, a translucent greenish pouch that sits and, and attaches to the liver. It's called the gallbladder. Go ahead and launch the poll, Nicole. <laughs> Tell me what you think the gallbladder would do. Does it filter blood to help the immune system? Does it store bile used for digestion? Does it pick up digested food for the blood? Let me know what you think that it is. All right, we got almost all of our answers in. A, a little bit of everybody on this one for all three answers. The correct answer is that it stores bile used for digestion. It's all part of that that process. So we'll go ahead and close the poll and we're going to move on to the next group of organs. And the reason why I say group is because with two very simple cuts, you're pulling out the bulk of what's left inside. So we're going to start with this tube right here. Let's see if you guys can see it. There's a tube right up front here. It's a very solid tube. Sometimes it's a little bit more white. So this one is, is pretty red, actually. This is the esophagus. And this tube, we're going to cut it right at the point behind the, the mouth and the gills. And I'm going to pull everything towards the vent all the way out. Who can tell me through chat, what does the esophagus do? Anybody tell me? Yes, it carries food. It takes uh, food from the mouth to the stomach. So as you can see, I have just cut the esophagus. And that's the, the primary cut that I made. And you can see it's got some little filaments in there and little pieces to it. And it's a fairly thick piece of tissue that you've cut. Um, and that is the primary responsibility of carrying that food down to the stomach. The other cut that I made was right down here at the vent. It's just a very small piece of tissue that I have cut to pull that out. Now the next thing that we're gonna look at is the stomach. And that's this part right here. And that dark green part, let me hold it up. I don't know how well you can see what I'm, I'm holding there. So this dark green part, this, this trout had not eaten a whole bunch before um, it was given to me and I froze it. So oh, if I open that up, we would be able to see what it last ate. And in this case, there's a whole bunch of granules 
being a hatchery fish, this fish is fed, or this trout is um, fed pellets, and that's their, their nutrients that they get there at the hatchery. So this is just a, a broken down pellet. If you were to do this in the, in, in the wild, you might find different types of bugs in there and invertebrates that the trout has been eating in and above water. So the next thing you're gonna look at is the intestine. And this is all part of it to include where it comes out at the end of the vent. Who can tell me what the intestine does? Go ahead and use chat and tell me what you think the intestine, what's the function of the intestine? It's, yes, where the nutrients from the, the digested food is picked up by the blood, exactly. It's all part of that breakdown process and the nutrients go into the blood from there. Now we're gonna launch number five, poll number five. We're talking about the air bladder, which would be this organ right here. What is the purpose of the air bladder? Does it work like the human's lungs for breathing? Does it store di digestive gases? Or does it help control the fish depth in the water? How high or low it might go? All right, we'll give it a few more seconds and let the rest of you get caught up on the poll. We've got a, a variety of answers in this. Okay, so we'll go ahead and close this out. It controls the depth of the water. They're able to, in, to inflate or deflate this air bladder as, according to where they want to be in the, in the body of water that they're in. So if they wanna get to cooler water, they, they might deflate it and go deeper and sink lower into the water. If they wanna come up to the top, look for some some flies and some special bugs to, to eat for dinner, then they'll, they'll inflate it and they'll rise to the top. Now there's another part that we're gonna get into and it's this really dark red spot. And it can typically be found towards the bottom of the intestines, closer towards the vent. Can anybody tell me what the, what the spleen does? Yeah. <laughs> Any guesses? So the spleen, some will tell you that it's a non-essential organ. Um, it's a similar structure to a lymph node and it acts primarily as a blood filter and plays important roles in regard to red blood cells in the immune system. That is what the spleen is part of. All right, so we're gonna set these aside and we're gonna go into, we have three more organs to look at. And the first of the last that we're gonna look at is this dark red line that right down the backbone. It sits right in between all the internal organs that we just looked at and the spine itself. Anybody give me an idea what they think that might be, what organ that is? Go ahead and use the, the chat box and tell me what you think it might be. Pumps blood, spinal cord, kidney. Several different answers coming in. Kidney is correct. So anybody know what the kidney does? What is it, what, that, what does that organ do for the body? It filters blood very well. And I see a comment that it messes up the taste of the fish. You know, I've heard that before, but as long as you get it out all the way when you're cleaning your, your, your trout or whatever species of fish that you've caught, it will not mess up the taste. So in, to do that, as a dissection, it's a very gelled piece of, of tissue that's over the top of the, the organ itself. So I just gently take it and cut down the sides but the organ itself is very gelatin. 
So as you're pulling it out, it tends to, it's like putting jelly on a, on a sandwich. It, it doesn't always cooperate. Sometimes it gets a little uh, chunky in areas while other times it's, it, it can be a solid piece for you. So here's where part of the gooeyness comes in. There is the kidney. Now, if you're cleaning a, a trout or a different fish out for, for eating, you'll just clean this entire section out until you get the bulk of that out and it is easily done. Okay, so the next organ that we're gonna look at is the heart. And the heart, lots of, lots of people mistake the liver for the heart because of its placement and its size. But the heart, and this one's kind of sticking out a little bit, the heart sits right behind the pectoral fin, which is this front fin, and the gill. So it's, it's sitting right in the, in the very front of the body. And when you come in here, there's a little piece of tissue that you can pull out, and it's very triangle-ish. Um, it looks kind of like a pyramid. And you're gonna be able to cut the the artery that attaches it. And there's your heart. Who can tell me what the heart does? Go ahead and use your chat and tell me what you think the heart does. Let me see if I can get you a better angle on this picture while we're doing that. There we go. Pumps blood. Yep, pretty straightforward. It's the, the motor, the engine and it pumps the blood for the, the trout. Okay, we're gonna have one more organ to pull out. And this one will be the eyeball and the lens in the eyeball. So we're gonna try to turn this guy to where you can see exactly what I'm doing. So I'm gonna take my tool and I'm gonna poke right into the eyeball itself. And there's a real thick layer of tissue in there that can be kind of hard to puncture. So I usually get down in there and start pulling away between the, the socket and the eyeball, the tissue that's in there. Now, that is not what we're going for though. So I've just pulled the eyeball itself out of the socket. So inside the eyeball is the lens. And trout, along with, many, with other fish, they have the ability to see almost 360 degrees. And it's because of a special lens inside their eyeballs. So when we get in there, whoo, we're gonna squeeze a little bit in there and we're gonna feel around until we can find that lens. Sometimes they're harder to find than others. I know I can feel it in there. We might have to go to the, whoop, maybe. Okay, this one's a very tiny lens, very tiny lens. So I might pull out the other lens just so that you can get a better view and see if it's bigger. So you can see it's just a real glass transparent um, little ball that sits inside the eyeball. Okay, I'm gonna do the other one and see if we can get a bigger, a bigger lens for you to look at. So I see a couple of requests for the brain and I have to see, once we're all done with this, what kind of timing we have, because the brain can be consuming in time uh, because it's, it's hard to get into the brain 
because uh, you have to cut through some of the, the thicker tissue and, and pieces, and it's very tiny and difficult to, to get into. Oh, this one, yeah, this one just has little lenses. All right, let's see if that helps at all. I don't know if you can see that on there, how well you can see it or not. There's actually both of them. I don't know if you, <laughs> they're not picking up very good on this camera today. They're so tiny. These are, I mean, they're no, no bigger, much bigger than the tips of my, my scissors that I'm using for this. So, so Nicole, I'll go ahead and start working on seeing if I can get into this brain. If you want to share some questions with me. Yeah, Julie, currently we don't have any open questions in the question and a box, but if anybody has any questions that they can think of while Julie is working on getting into that brain, we can go ahead and start answering some of those for you guys. Yes, feel free, ask away. I'll keep working on this real quick. See if I can get in there or not. Julie, we've got one question for you. <laughs> can okay. fish fart? Pardon me? Can fish fart? Uh, you know, that's a great question. I don't know. That's going to have to be something that I investigate and find out. I know birds, do, birds cannot, so I, I don't know if fish do or not. We have a question coming in that asks, do fish eyes bounce like frog eyes do? Um, I've never tried to bounce them. I've had several students over the years pop them and they, um, they pop with quite the vigor, um, to the point where, where people normally get squirted that are not the ones holding the, the eyeball. Okay. And another question we have for you, Julie, is how does the lens develop and what is it made of? Oh, that is, I, Another quick, great question that I do not know the answer to, and I will have to do some research on that and see what I can find. How long can fish live? Oh, well, it depends on the species of fish. We have um, several that they might only live to a couple years old as far as a standard um, lifespan. We have some other fish species in the state, um, to include some in the trout species, that can get 20 and 30 years old, like a brown trout. So um, like a brook trout, one of the smaller ones that have the blue spots on them, those, those are average about five years. Okay, great. Um, how do fish sleep? How do fish sleep? They hover in the water. Um, they kind of rest, like we were talking earlier, they, they just have moments of, of rest. So they don't have eyelids to cover or to close. Um, so it's more of a, of a, a bodily rest. And I'm sure we're going to get into this, but we have a couple questions on the brain. One, what color is the brain? And two, how big is the brain? The brain is tiny. <laughs> uh, the brain is smaller than the heart. Um, and I think I'm getting closer to it. Um, the brain is pink, very much like, um, like the human brain, actually. We've got one question for you asking, how many fish have you done surgery on now? <laughs> um, a lot. <laughs> um, Frequently, okay, so I'm gonna, before I destroy this, I'm gonna see if I can show you. So right in here, you can see where this finger is pointing. I don't know if you can see how kind of the bulbous material in there. Can you see that okay, Nicole? Uh, yes, we can see that. Okay, that is the brain. So I'm gonna try to pull it all the way out without destroying it. And what, uh, as far as the number of, of trout, that I've done. Um, I do love to fish. 
So I, um, and I am very much a um, catch and take. So I take my fish home and, and eat them, whether, whatever species it is that I'm, I'm fishing for. And so between those and running these, these dissections for classes, because I do offer these classes to classes as well, um, I've done several, a, a lot. And there's the brain. So you can see compared to the heart. <clears throat> All right, any other questions? Yeah, Julie, I've got a couple coming in through chat for you. We've got how long do fish live or how can you tell how old a fish is by looking at it? Um, that's, a, that's very difficult. So um, some of the older fish, um, trout in, in particular, we're going we're gonna to refer to trout since that's what we're working on. The, the older, especially a male will get, they'll, they'll get more of a hook on their, their lower jaw. Um, the, the, the females will also get a shorter nose um, or a longer jaw, but the, the males have the hook. Typically, the, the longer, the bigger the hook um, helps determine a little bit more on their age, meaning that they're older. But it, it's not an easy task to age a, um, to age a trout. There are some, some cool things. There's an operculum. An operculum? I think that's the right word for it. Um, <laughs> it's underneath. There, it's essentially like an eardrum for them. And if they can pull that out, and it is a very um in-depth process and i leave that process to the biologists that i work with because they know exactly what they're looking for um but it, they can take it it's a tiny little piece of bone that sits in their ear drum essentially and they can take it and put it under a microscope and tell exactly how old the the trout is by counting rings kind of like a tree and a tree stump <clears throat> All right, we've got a question on how many fish can we eat? How many fish can we eat? Um, yes. Well, it depends on, I, I'm assuming you're talking about, um, are you talking about fishing limits and what you can take home? Or are you talking about fish safety? Fish safety uh, would depend on the type of fish and the water that they've come through or come in um, because some of them they do have some some toxins in the water that if you eat too much of it you might you might run into some issues um, oh real quick the otolith yes otolith thank you uh, Katrina thank you that is correct the otolith is what the the piece inside their ear is is called that they can can determine age from um, as far as limits it depends on the species that you're you're fishing for and the time of year that you're fishing for as well uh, you can re refer to the bi the fishing regulations to see what what waters allow how many um, to keep and and not to keep when you're fishing. <clears throat> All right, any other questions? All right, let's pull up our final poll, Nicole. Ah, the, the, of course, the question that had to be asked, now that you've seen this, are you going to explore the next fish that you catch? I love it. Everybody's saying 100% so far. Very good. For the most part, everybody wants to do it. For those of you that say nope, have mom and dad do it for you. <laughs> Or brother or sister or somebody, your, your spouse, have them help you out with that. Have we had any more questions come in since, since starting the poll? We've got one that just came in on the Q&A box. It's asking how big are our kid fish? I guess how big are our juvenile fish? So um, juvenile fish, um, they, they'll get to, so this one is probably five, six years old, maybe seven years old as a, as a spawning adult. They don't typically become spawning adults until 
three, sometimes four. Some of the, some genetics will start spawning it at two-ish. But kid fish, as you say, we, we have a progression. We start with the eyed eggs. So when, once the eggs have been fertilized, they start growing in that process through the eggs. And then once they hatch out of that shell, they turn into something called alvin and they start developing their body. And they actually, all of the nutrients that they need is in a sac attached to their belly. Once that absorbs within a couple, um, within a couple of weeks of them hatching, they become fry and fingerling. And they can be anywhere, you know, it, it, they get to about this big by the time some of them get released into open waters and they start having to look for um, food of their own. They're no longer relying on, on the protein sac on their body. And they start with like zooplankton, tiny, tiny, tiny little um, food elements in the water. Did that answer your question? And they just proceed to grow um, as they get older and older. Rainbow trout, which is what we dissected today, they'll live 10, 11, some, sometimes even longer than that as far as years. Okay, well, we're gonna go ahead and conclude it. If I don't have any more questions going on, we'll, um, encourage you to embrace the outdoors, but also to do it responsibly. You can find out more about responsible recreation um, at the website down below on the screen that Nicole has sharing right now. And we encourage you to get out and explore our waters and explore what kind of fish species there are out there for you to, to enjoy. And once again, don't forget the, the survey. We really would love to hear from you on what we can do better and what else we can provide for you. We do plan to, well, I see one, one question that just came up. We do um, usually try to get these posted to our YouTube channel, the Nevada Department of Wildlife's YouTube channel. It might take a couple days or, or even into a week uh, because they do have to do some editing for it to, to be compatible. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and conclude it if we don't have any more questions. Thank you all, it's been a joy. And we encourage you, even if you're not in Nevada, we encourage you to, to get outside and embrace it. Just do it responsibly. Have a great Tuesday, guys.